moving on to looking at heat capacity and energy change. And this is important in chemical reactions because we're looking at uh, how, how does the bond break and form and whether or not this releases energy in the form of heat or it takes in energy as the form of heat. And then looking at how um, the energy moves from one system to another in a chemical reaction. The heat capacity is what we'll be looking at first and specific heat capacity is the amount of heat energy required to change the, the temperature of the substance of one gram of substance by one Kelvin. Uh, water has a high specific heat capacity and the unit for this uh, specific heat capacity is joules per gram per kilogram, uh, sorry per Kelvin. Uh, so when we're looking at Kelvin one cha a change by one Kelvin is equal to the change in one degree Celsius. So this is really important to remember for a bit later. When we look at this table, the specific heat capacities of a variety of substances, we're looking at water to mercury here, uh, we can see here that water has a very, very high specific heat capacity at 4.18 compared to say silver or mercury, which are less than one. Uh, the point of this table is just to show you that the different substances have different heat capacities and they can range from four to one or even more than that. Uh, so the enthalpy or heat content uh, so the heat energy changes are related to kinetic and chemical potential energies of the initial and the final states of the system. So initial being before the chemical reaction has occurred and final after. Uh, so we're looking at kinetic, so that's amount, the, the molecules moving around um, and chemical potential, what happens when we break the bonds, do they release energy or not. So enthalpy is denoted by H and is used to specify the heat content of a substance. The enthalpy of a system in a given state cannot be measured because we have no starting point to compare it to. So a negative sign um, for is denotes that the heat is liberated or it's exothermic and that means when we touch it the temperature is feeling hot so the temperature has, has risen. Positive values the heat is absorbed and therefore it's an endothermic change because it's pulling heat out from the surroundings into the into the system and the temperature drops so it feels cold. Uh, so we just need to remember that it's the opposite. So when it releases heat and it feels hot it's a negative sign and the positive sign means that it's feeling cold so it's opposite of what you would really think. So just remember that. So when quantities of the heat are simply calculated the same equation can be used. So M equals C delta T. So what we had here before was the change in enthalpy delta H is equal to the negative of the mass, where M is mass. C is the specific heat capacity of the substance, so that's usually given by your tables. And uh, the delta T is the temperature difference from the initial to the final state. But Q is only just the last bit, there's no change. So there's, and we're not looking at whether it's exothermic or endothermic, so we take out the negative sign. A calorimeter is the device to measure the heat released or absorbed by a physical or chemical process and it's constructed in our labs with a polystyrene foam cup because it's a very good insulator for heat. Uh, it consists of a known mass of water inside or a solution in an insulated container, so in our case we'll be using polystyrene cups, um, in, equipped with a thermometer to see any temperature changes and a stirrer to make sure that all the the reagents have been mixed well together and then can react. The initial temperature of the water is measured before the reaction takes place, so we have the starting point. Remember we said that we can't measure the enthalpy with just one point, we need to have the change. And contents are stirred and the process takes place, uh, lets the process take place and then we can measure the final temperature and then uh, get the difference. A calorimetry equation is used to calculate the specific heat capacity or molar heat capacity. In summary, what we're looking at is the specific heat capacity and that's the quantity of heat required to change the temperature of one gram of a substance by one Kelvin or one degree Celsius. Molar heat capacity is the quantity of heat required to change the temperature of one mole of a substance by one Kelvin or one degree Celsius. And the enthalpy change equation is delta H, that's the change in enthalpy, uh, equals negative mass times the specific heat capacity denoted by C times the change in temperature. 
where the negative of this is exothermic, remember it's releasing the heat, feeling hot, and then the positive is endothermic, or keeping the heat in. So now that we've summarized what we've just learned, we can look at some questions. Question one, how much energy will be required to raise the temperature of one liter of water in a kettle from 17 to 18 degrees? So one liter of water is 1,000 mils, and 1,000 mils is pretty close to 1,000 grams. And we usually assume that one, one gram of water is equal to one mil of water. Using that, we can then say that the specific heat capacity of water is 4.18, because that was from our table, and it's also in your, it should be in your tables that you're given in the exams. So, and that means we just went up one degree, one Kelvin, because one degree Celsius change is equal to one Kelvin change. And using the formula M equals, uh, we don't even need to use the formula here because we know that to change one degree Celsius is the heat specific heat capacity, which is here. So question two, a piece of copper weighs 155 grams. Calculate the change in enthalpy when the temperature of the copper piece is uh, changed from 25 to 100, uh, 200 degrees Celsius. And if we know that the specific heat capacity is point 387 joules per gram per kilogram. So we use the equation delta H is equal to mc delta T, or we just usually say m cap. So we know that the mass is 155 grams. The specific heat capacity was given here, 0.387, and then we know the change in temperature was 200 minus 25, which gives us 175 Kelvin, which is the same because one Kelvin change is one centigrade degrees centigrade change. Plug that all in, we get uh, 10,497 joules. We can convert that into kilojoules, so divide that by 1,000 gives us 10.5 kilojoules. We round it off. And then question three, calculate the specific heat of nickel if 920 grams of heat energy was required to raise the temperature to 130 grams of nickel, uh, 130 grams to, from 15 to 31 degrees. So we use the equation again. We know the change, uh, the amount of energy we put in to change the enthalpy was 920. So we put that as H, delta H. The mass was given here, 130 grams. Um, and the change in temperature is 31 and 15, from 15 to 31. So 31 minus 15 gives us the change in temperature. We can then make C the subject because we're looking for the specific heat capacity, C specific heat capacity. Um, so 920 joules divided by the, the mass, 130 grams, times the chain, the temperature change, 16 Kelvin, and that gives us 0.44 joules per gram Kelvin. Question four, what is a calor calorimeter? Remember, it was that, that styrofoam cup, so it's a device used to measure the heat released or absorbed by a physical or chemical process. And it means you need to make sure that this uh, device is uh, heat insulated, so that's why we're using polystyrene cups because they keep the heat energy in, and therefore we can we're not losing it to the environment, and we can measure the changes. And question five: Explain why, um, when you're at the beach on a hot day, the sand becomes very hot, but the water remains cool. And they give you the table of specific heat capacities of water and sand. So water we know is 4.18 and they rounded it off here to 4.2 and so looking at those we can then explain why. So water has a higher specific heat capacity than sand, 4.2 compared to 1.09. They both receive the same amount of heat uh, from the sun, so the sun is just shining on all of it at the same amount, but this makes the sand hotter than the water because the water has a higher specific heat capacity and therefore it means that it takes more heat, so more energy from the sun to heat uh, a gram of water than it does to heat a gram, of a gram of sand. So that same amount of heat will heat the sand up very fast because it has a lower specific heat capacity. So just to summarize, what we were looking at was heat capacity today. And the equation that you need to remember is delta H equals minus uh, mc delta T, or m cap, and that uh, the specific heat capacity of water is very high, so that means you need to put a lot more energy in to raise the temperature compared to uh, this 
the sand or any other compound where the heat capacity can be quite low. Thank you.